Welcome indeed to the Silex Open Forum. From February, uh, we have started uh, this year's uh, the Silex for, for, uh, Open Forum. Uh, next uh, week, we are going to have uh, the US uh, Science and Technology Innovation Policy. And the third one is more sustainable society. And fourth is going to be uh, the how to make the R&D uh, restriction uh, more uh, effective and uh, practical. And today, uh, we are going to have uh, this program uh, to discuss the importance of the open innovation for the new space industry. When you have questions, please use a QA function. Uh, do not uh, use the chat. Uh, you can raise the question both in Japanese and English. Now, with that, I'd like to give the floor to Kantan to steer this meeting. Thank you very much. And hello, everyone. Uh, apologies for the, the slight delay in starting this event. Uh, my name is Quentin Verspiren. I'm an assistant professor of space policy at the Graduate School of Public Policy of the University of Tokyo. I am also part of a Cyrex affiliated program called the Science, Technology and Innovation Governance Program, in short, STIG program, where I conduct uh, research on various space policy issues, including the space policy of developing countries, space safety and sustainability, space security and the military uses of space technologies, etc. First of all, I would like to thank the Cyrex Center uh, for inviting me to organize this session as part of its annual Cyrex Open Forum. The STIG program was established in 2013. It is a University of Tokyo program that harnesses specialized graduate school level education in the humanities and the sciences. STIG fosters human resources who can lead science and technology governance with knowledge of the science, technology, and innovation policymaking process in each field, and knowledge of the evidence building methods required to draft and implement STI policy. Specifically, the program advances both education and research activities, primarily aimed at fostering policymaking specialists, STI researchers, and research and development management specialists. On the educational front, the STIG program has established a curriculum for students to obtain a, cert a graduate certificate in science, technology, and innovation policy. Up to now, around 200 students have completed the requirements of the STIG program, among which 25% are from the Graduate School of Public Policy, 25% from the Graduate School of Engineering, and the remaining 50% are a combination of students from other graduate schools from the humanities and the sciences. This diversity of profiles make STIG affiliated course the perfect place to realize the cross pollination, which is at the core of STIG and Cyrex values. In terms of research, STIG covers various sectors of technology governance, such as biomedical, energy, and space. In particular, in recent years, the STIG program has developed a strong expertise in international space affairs, including, as I already mentioned, space safety and sustainability, space security, space technology development and utilization in developing countries. Um, thanks to uh, numerous new staff uh, and researchers dedicated to space policy research and, and numerous students interested in uh, pursuing their master or PhD in space related. Uh, subjects. And according to this research interest, we are conducting numerous studies uh, funded mostly by Japanese government agencies. The theme of this year's Cyrex Open Forum is the implementation of the six basic plan on science, technology, and innovation, covering the period from fiscal years 2021 to 2025. The core idea of this plan that leads the overall uh, science, technology, and innovation in the country um, is to reaffirm, first reaffirm the goal of the fifth STI basic plan. And it is to work towards the realization of what they call the Society 5.0, which is defined as, and I quote, a human-centered society 
that balances economic advancement with the resolution of social problems by a system that highly integrates the cyberspace and the physical space. And at the core of the strategy outlined in the six STI basic plan of the government of Japan is the concept of open innovation. Willing to link a key feature of the six STI basic plan with one of our main research interests at the STIG program, today's session combines the concept of open innovation with a study on the emergence of a new space sector in Japan. First, in order to understand in detail the principles of open innovation and its concrete implementation, University of Tokyo Executive Vice President and School of Engineering Professor Tatsuya Okubo will deliver a keynote on the University of Tokyo's efforts to promote open innovation in his quality of chairman of the university's Institute for Open Innovation. Then a wonderful panel composed of experts from the government, academia, and the industry will discuss concrete projects and policies to promote open innovation in the Japanese new space sector. Let us now move to University of Tokyo Executive Vice President Okubo for his keynote. Professor Okubo is a chemical engineer and material chemist, professor of chemical system engineering and the former dean of the Graduate School of Engineering at the University of Tokyo. He studied chemical engineering at undergraduate and graduate schools at the University of Tokyo and obtained his PhD in 1988. He then spent his early career at Kyushu University, the University of Tokyo, and the California Institute of Technology before starting his full professorship at the University of Tokyo in 2006. Professor Okubo is fellow of the Society of Chemical Engineers of Japan and a member of the Engineering Academy of Japan. He has a wide experience in international collaborations with both academic and industrial partners as well as a very valuable startup experience. Professor Okubo will speak uh, in Japanese. So for those of you who are not Japanese speakers, uh, please remember to select the English channel of the translation. Professor Okubo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for that generous introduction. I am Okubo, Executive Vice President of uh, the University of Tokyo. Uh, today, I'd like to share with you the activities of IOI uh, of Tokyo, uh, University of Tokyo, uh, because I am uh, the chair of that IOI. Please go to the next slide. So uh, those are the three points that we would like to cover today. Uh, first part, uh, what is the uh, concept of the open innovation? And second chart is uh, about the role of IOI at University of Tokyo. And thirdly, I'd like to give you specific examples of open innovation by IOI. Please go to the next slide. So what is innovation to start with? I'd like to speak a little bit on this topic. Of course, innovation uh, is brought about by technological development, as you know. However, technology evolution itself is not the innovation. In our context, in our modern time, already at the technology development, we need to look at what would be its potential impact on economy and society. And as a result, we will see new industrial structure so the new industrial structure is serving as a kind of indicator to evaluate the degree of innovation. Now, please look at this. When we think about the innovation, uh, lately, uh, from the 2003, starting from the chess bro, people start to talk about open innovation. This is what we call the first generation type of open innovation. And here, this is talking about the big companies. They are utilizing not only uh, uh, their retained technologies, but they start to license them out or let others to use. And with that, 
uh, this was called the open innovation. So that was uh, the beginning of the use of this terminology. And then came the second generation. The keyword here is modularity and architecture. So the second generation open innovation were for the modularity and uh, uh, architecture. In terms of chronology, actually the second generation came uh, the research papers uh, were published before the first generation uh, researchers, but anyway, uh, the second generation open innovation is characterized by, characterized by the modularization. Because of that, we can eliminate a very much complicated integral kinds of architecture, and we were able to reduce the lead time for development. And that allowed you to more flexibly adapt to the changes in the market. And also the partnership rule formation became much easier. And that means that the networking among the companies becomes much faster. And that is the arrival of the network ecosystem era. So that is the third generation of open innovation. We will come back to this point with uh, specific examples. But when you create network ecosystem, that is the third open, third generation open innovation. And we are now living in this third uh, the network uh, externality and the path dependency and uh, the lock-in, those have been started to uh, emerge uh, in the economic processes. So the keyword ecosystem uh, creation is the third generation. So uh, we live in a network ecosystem and when we consider open innovation, we have to recognize that we live in this networked ecosystem. Now, this is our vision as IOI. This is to summarize uh, our vision. Our society was supported by innovations. It is not an exaggeration to say that. IOI is trying to utilize the technologies and the uh, knowledge of our university by combining our strength with the strengths of the industries, we would like to make a contribution to the world. And we are promoting the opportunities for the industry to do that together. Next slide, please. Yes, this one. So uh, it, it is well known that the knowledge spill over will start innovation through the academy and the industry collaboration. We will be able to create new social value and lead to economic growth. And from that economic growth, we'll be able to create a positive cycle of de-investing into academia toward evolutionary knowledge commons. On the other hand, for companies, for business cooperation, it is difficult to challenge innovation because they would need additional resources and also they are required to make very tough decisions. It is no longer just the technology development, but the organizational innovation is also needed and which is making the situation very complicated. We have our own resources and the facilities that will be accessible to those companies. That way we'll be able to reduce the cost that the companies may have to face when they try to challenge innovation. So I'd like to now uh, take you to the next section, which is about our activities at IOI. So uh, one of the features of IOI is uh, we take innovation as an uh, entire system. So it's not just uh, technology development. Uh, innovation process design is done together with our partners so that efficiently uh, we create the social values. More specifically, uh, we are offering the technology strategy and IP strategy and also the competitive strategy. That way, we are able to contribute to the development of the business corporations, and that will also lead to the cycle, positive cycle of reinvesting into our wisdom technologies. Okay, uh, now please look at this as organization chart. This is our organization. Next one, please. 
So not just uh, the uh, technologies, but also we need uh, the professional information like uh, IP or uh, legal uh, affairs and uh, security. All those uh, uh, services are all needed. At IOI, we have professional staff for those. And then we also have the uh, coordinators. Actually, those are the people who have experience in the business corporation and therefore uh, they are serving as a good interface between the uh, university and companies. I am sitting as a chair and then as a chief operating manager, we have Mr. Kamijo. And below us, there are management organizations or groups taking care of many R&D projects. So this is the overall structure. Now, please go to the next slide. There are three types. First, we have the traditional, well, one-on-one uh, -on -one collaboration. And on top of this, as was mentioned earlier, we have the networked innovation as second part. This involves multiple companies and it comes up with the network style innovation. And the ecosystem type innovation is now being receiving attention, but we believe this kind of innovation is going to be more important. And we have the value chain and supply chain in mind from the very beginning. And this allows an environment that um, the public and private and the academia can work together and um, further details will be given later on. The third part is the regional innovation to allow the regional economies to boost. Well, this is important and this is essential. That is why the industrial clusters must be built together with the regional academia and the local government, as well as the local economies and businesses. These are what we will be covering. And this is also part of our vision. And this is how we have been making various considerations. From the next slide, let me take two case studies of an actual open innovation. The first one is this one. This is um, done by Professor Makoto Fujita, who is also a professor at the University of Tokyo. And they have developed this crystalline sponge method. And this is a joint research being done by them. And it, every time um, Professor Fujita's research achievements are being featured by the media and 19 different businesses have joined to do a joint development. And it also involves pharmaceutical manufacturers, food, and chemical manufacturers, as well as measurement equipment manufacturers. And of course, each businesses want to further develop their own knowledge and skills, but at the same time, they form a partnership and they create um, a business network among themselves. And to come up with a standalone ecosystem formation, they will be able to come up with this new industrial structure. Let's say, for example, to come up with a beer that is also healthy oriented. Well, this is exactly the crystalline sponge method. So it comes up with a component which will not form crystalline. And this is a very groundbreaking method. And by analyzing the structure of these crystals, they have been able to gather the insights from the other businesses. And together with this networked partner, they have been able to develop to the OCB and this is how the projects are ongoing. And to create an ecosystem, this kind of academia, public private academia uh, is really doing well. And this is a very good um, best practice I would like to say. Next slide, please. Another case study is about space. And this is part of the space business. This is, again, this is uh, public and private academia joint development. And we have Professor Nakasuka from also making, uh, being as a pioneer in the nano satellites or the microsatellites. And Professor Nakasuka has formed a group 
which came up with companies like Arc, Edge Space, or Inspectives, and various venture companies have been generating and emerging. And through these public academia, private joint development, efficient development is being done. And these micro satellites are also creating opportunities for emerging countries to join the space industry. And this is how they are providing opportunities for the emerging countries at the same time providing technical or technology training and ais a thai venture company was involved and the tokyo space business in this tokyo space business show this um thai venture company received the grant award and this really shows how professor nakaska's achievement has been supporting the technology of ais Next slide, please. This is the contact of our IOI and this University of Tokyo Institute of Open Innovation always takes challenges in making further innovation to create um, and contribute to society and economy. And this is how we are continuing our researches and development. We would like to highly ask for your support and collaboration. At the same time, we'd like to provide and and look forward to work on innovation together. Again, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers for allowing me to introduce about the University of Tokyo Institute of Open Tech and Innovation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Okubo, for this very enlightening keynote. Um, I think it was really the, the perfect introduction to the concept of open innovation um, that as you, as you showed uh, changed over time. So there is a, a certain complexity in understanding uh, precisely what it entails. So thank you very much for clarifying that. And it, it really allows us to go into the panel with clarity on, on what we will talk about. And, and also a side note, and thank you for mentioning uh, example with space, including the laboratory of Professor Nakasuka and Arcade Space that are present in the panel. So, so really thank you for helping me with this transition.